All right, we're going to talk about today's 3.6. It's polynomial and rational inequalities. We're going to solve polynomial inequalities, solve rational inequalities, and solve problems modeled by polynomial rational inequalities. First thing we're going to do is kind of figure out what to do. Uh, to do this, we're going to basically get to zero on one side of our equation. So uh, if it's rational, we need to combine uh, whatever is on the same side uh, into one term. So if you have to move things from one side to the other, make sure you combine them into one term if you're dealing with a rational inequality. After you get it set equal to zero, whether it's a polynomial or a rational inequality, we're going to find the critical numbers. And the critical numbers, they're basically two types, the values that make it zero and the values that make it undefined. The values that make it zero are going to be uh, when you set your numerator equal to zero and solve. Now obviously if there isn't a fraction, you just set the whole thing equal to zero and solve. Or the values that make it undefined. And to define those, we're going to set our denominator equal to zero and solve. And then once we do that, each critical number is going to divide our graph into different sections. We need to basically test each section to determine whether uh, that section is going to be positive or negative. And sometimes we can use graphs to help us out with stuff like that. So let's see if we can't look at uh, example number one here. We have this 2x squared plus x minus 15 is equal to 0. So what we need to do is go ahead and get it set equal to 0 first. As you can see, this one's already set compared to 0. I guess not equal to is the correct way to say it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our critical numbers. So uh, I don't have a denominator, so all I'm going to do is set that numerator equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to try to factor that. When I multiply these together, I get negative 30x squared. So I want two numbers that will multiply to give me that that will add to give me this. And I think they exist. So we'll use, uh, let's see, a positive 6x and a negative 5x. So those two should add to give me that and multiply to give me that. At this point in time, what we're going to do is we're going to factor by grouping. So factor out of 2x, and that leaves us x plus 6, x plus 3 rather. Factor out of negative 5, x plus 3. And then we're going to go ahead and group these together and yeah, put our coefficients. So that's the factored form for that polynomial. And now the critical numbers. So I'm going to set this equal to 0 and get negative 3, and this equal to 0 and get 5 halves. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our nice little number line here and say we have zeros of negative 3 and 5 halves. And as you can see, that's going to divide our graph into three parts. There's actually one part to the left of negative 3, one part in between those two zeros, and then one part to the right there. Now the good news is, is this is a pretty basic thing for us. We can actually use the graph to help us out. Normally, if I didn't know what the graph would look like, I would plug in some number that's left of negative 3, like negative 4, negative 5. I would plug it in anywhere, so I could plug it in here and see what the sign would be, or I could plug it in here into my original. And if it's uh, greater than zero, then it's positive, and that's what we're looking for. If it's less than zero, then that's not what we're looking for based on our graph. And then I would plug in something in between these, like zero, and then something in between this section, and try to determine the signs. But luckily, I know the shape of this graph. This graph would be a quadratic, since it has a positive A, it's going to open up. So our graph would look a little something like this. Now, as you can see, uh, what we're looking for is there are two sections, uh, or two different values for this graph. Okay, this section right here is below the x-axis. So therefore the y values are negative, where these sections right here are above the x-axis. So those are positive. Now these values right here that we find, of course, those were the values where it was equal to zero. So those are those values right here where it's equal to zero. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the sections that make this true. Well, this wants our polynomial to be greater than zero, which of course is positive. So we're actually going to have two solutions to this. It's going to be the numbers that are less than negative three. So we'll say negative or infinity, comma negative three, union, and then from five halves to positive infinity. So that's our solution to our polynomial inequality. Uh, just remember it is going to be in parentheses because this does not say it could be equal to zero. If we had a bar under here, then those zeros would be included. Of course, the values that make it undefined will never be included in our answer.